Good day, Eco 235 students. We continue with topic two of your nonlinear mathematical economic problems for week three. This week we will cover the topics partial differentiation and unconstrained optimization. The work covered can be found on page 122 of the prescribed textbook by you 2018 and the section in which you would find the work is section 5.2. An additional reading is that of the textbook by Jacques 2013. Last week you dealt with differentiation and the advanced rules of differentiation namely the product, quotient and chain rule but the function in those instances only had one independent variable. But now we need to ask ourselves, what if a function has more than one independent variable? In economics, many functions have more than one independent variable. If we think about the theory of demand, the quantity demanded is dependent on variables such as household income, the price of the good, the price of related goods such as complements and subs substitutes, preferences for instance, the size of the household. So there is more than one independent variable. Now a function of two variables is an operation that takes the two independent variables, let's say x and y, and combines them in some mathematical operation to produce some solution that can be denoted z. So here, in other words, we have z is equal to a function of the variables x and y. Now, before we go on, I'd like to highlight that in Eco 151, your first year microeconomics course, you dealt with differentiation extensively. So you would have dealt with the math applications in the form of having to either obtain the, the first order derivatives of a function and then you needed to get your second order derivatives to evaluate the value of x to determine if it was a relative maximum or relative minimum and you would then solve problems such as determining the level of output that would maximize profit for instance or determine the level of q that would minimize cost um, what else you also needed to determine the input labor that would maximize production, for instance. So those are all instances where you use differential calculus. The key thing there was you dealt with one independent variable in all of those functions. Now, in second year, you're going to be exposed to a number of functions that have more than one independent variable. So in microeconomics, you will see this this week that utility, for instance, is going to be a function of the consumption of good X and good Y. For example, the example this week is that of food and clothing. Then in chapter six of microeconomics, you will find that production is a function of labor and capital. So these are just examples of how partial differentiation is going to help you solve those optimization problems. Now in the example given here we have z is equal to a function of x and y and it is equal to the product of x and y plus 20 times x and here you can see you have a function of two variables x and y. So given a function of two variables z for instance being a function of x and y you can determine the two first order partial derivatives now the word partial here is quite important so there are two first order partial derivatives and you will find that you have four second order derivatives the notation for your partial derivative of the function is given by these curly d's right so therefore the partial derivative of a function with respect to x holding y constant the notation can be given as partial dz by dx or it can be given as the partial df by dx 
or if with the subscript x and all this notation is telling me that I'm getting the first order partial derivative of a function f with respect to x but I am holding y constant. We will see in a moment how this is applied. Next, we will see that in order to find the first order partial derivative of a function with respect to y, we then differentiate the function with respect to y, but we treat x as a constant. Now remember, when you differentiate a constant, remember that it differentiated to zero. That is important to bear in mind. So in terms of the notation, when you obtain your first order partial derivative of the function with respect to y, you could say it's the partial dz by dy or your partial df by dy or f with a subscript y. And this tells me that it's your first order partial derivative of this function with respect to y. So before we continue with an example, do you understand why it is called a partial derivative? So each time we are differentiating, we're differentiating part of that function f, holding the other variable constant. Now here we have an example. We have our function. And you can see it is a function of x and y. And it is given as it is equal to x squared plus xy, x times y plus y squared. So when we partially differentiate, we will differentiate with respect to a particular variable holding the other constant. So this notation here is telling me I'm getting the partial derivative of this function with respect to x, but I'm going to treat y as a constant. So here, to get the first order partial derivative of f with respect to x, we would have to differentiate everything that has an x and treat the y's as constants. So if I differentiate x squared, I'm going to get 2 times this coefficient of x, which is 1. So that is 2x, and that power now becomes 2 in minus 1, so 2 minus 1. So I'm just left with 2x. Now I'm going to jump to the last term. And if we were to differentiate y, with respect to x, we are going to get 0. So similarly, if you were to differentiate y squared with respect to x, you are also going to get 0. So we're treating it as a con constant. And last week, we saw that constants differentiate to 0. So what about this middle term over here? Well, now when we differentiate a constant multiple, we differentiate the x pretending y is a constant, then we multiply what we've differentiated for x by this constant, and in this case the constant is y. So here when we differentiated x, we got 1, because remember the exponent of that x is 1, so 1 times this coefficient in front of the x is just 1, so it's 1x, but x is now raised to the power of 1 minus 1, so it's raised to the power of 0, and anything raised to the power of 0 is just 1. So if we multiply that by this constant, we are just left with 1y. So we're just left with the constant in this case. So hence the partial derivative of this function with respect to x holding y constant is equal to 2x plus y. Now we're going to do the same for this function. We are going to get the partial derivative of this function with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So if we differentiate x squared with respect to y, this is just going to differentiate to 0 because we're treating this as a constant. However, this middle term over here, x represents this constant of y, but remember we are differentiating this function with respect to y. So wherever you see a y, you differentiate that. So if I differentiate this, I'm going to get the exponent 1 multiplied by the coefficient here, which is 1, so it's just 1y, but y is now raised to the power of 0, and anything raised to the power of 0 is just 1. So what I'm left with is just this constant x.
right? And now if I differentiate this, I know I'm going to get 2y. So therefore, the partial derivative with respect to y, treating x as constant, gives me x plus 2y. Let's look at another example. Right, slightly more complicated. So here we have our function of two variables x and y, and it's 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus 10x y plus 10x squared y plus 5y plus 6y squared plus 10y to the power of 3. So firstly, I'm going to get my partial derivative of this function with respect to x. So partial df by dx, that means I'm differentiating this wherever I see an x, but I'm treating y as a constant. So my first term, that is going to be 3 times 3, it's going to give me 9 x raised to the power of 3 minus 1, that's just x squared. So I have 9x squared over there. Next one, 2 times 2 is 4. Simply 2 minus 1, that's just x to the power of 1. So I have 4x. Here I have a constant multiple. So remember, I'm going to differentiate where I have the x. So it's going to be 1 times 10 is 10, but that x is raised to the power of 0 now. So that's just 1. So I just have 10 y. Remember, that gets treated as a constant multiple. So we can't forget about that y. Now, this next term, we have 2 times 10 is 20, and x is now raised to the power of 2 minus 1, so that is just to the power of x, so that is 20x y, because that is a constant multiple. Now, the remaining three terms, remember, we will treat y as a constant, so these differentiate to 0, because our first partial derivative was with respect to x, treating y as a constant, so those terms differentiate to 0. Now let's do our next partial derivative with respect to y, treating x as a constant. So this term the, and this term over here gets differentiate to 0 because we treat them as constants, but over here we have our constant multiple. So in this case, because y is raised to the power of 1, this is simply just going to be 10x because 10x is that the constant in this case. Here we have 10x squared times y, and again y is raised to the power of 1. So just to recap, I'm going to say my exponent 1 times this coefficient 1 is just 1y raised to the power of 0, which is just 1. So I'm left with 10x squared. Over here, I have 5y, and if I differentiate that, I'm just left with my constant 5. Here we have 6y squared, so 2 times 6 is 12 y raised to the power of 1, because I would have said 2 minus 1, n minus 1, that gives me y to the power of 1, plus 30y squared, and how did I obtain that? 3 times 10 is 30, and y squared is because our n is 3, so 3 minus 1 gives me y squared. So please attempt this question. All the questions that are in the slides, I will upload the solutions provided you demonstrate that you have attempted these questions. So coming back to partial differentiation, there are four second order partial derivatives. I'm going to continue with this in the next part of the slides, but please be in mind that this isn't prescribed specifically for this course, but it is important for your applications of your unconstrained and constrained optimization problems. So we will touch on this topic briefly. So we will continue with this in the second part.